Um, and this is uh, their, I forget whether it was Atlantic Magazine or so, the one of the uh, scary things, um, you know, because Goose syndrome is not just toxicity syndrome. You know, like we hear a lot about heavy metals and pesticides and uh, environmental estrogens out there that come from plastics. Detoxing from those is comparatively easy because you're not dealing with a live substance. You just need to uncamouflage that substance and make the immune system aware of that and open up the emunctory, so to speak and you can pee it out and defecate it out, um, drain the lymph, etc., and get rid of that. Um, but living organisms that create a chronic toxicity in the host, uh, you're basically dealing with other intelligent beings who have uh, evolutionary evasion mechanisms that are millions of years old because some of these things, bacteria, protozoan organisms, spirochetes, and worms, the viruses, they're extremely ancient and they have ways of encapsulating themselves under so-called biofilm that Western medicine has only recently become aware of and hide itself. And in addition to that, and this is one of the reasons why people, uh, while goose syndrome in the classics is can be translated as possession syndrome is because they have an active stake in being involved in your hormonal system and in your brain chemistry and because they um and through that endocrine axis and brain chemistry axis they they are in the driver's seat they steer your cravings they steer even your emotions because certain emotional outbursts, you know, just like we have sudden sugar cravings, well, it's not that your body says, do something good for me, it's the parasite, and there's lots of them. Um, and when you're talking about parasites here, it means chronic bacteria that are chronic now, uh, viruses that are chronic, spirochetes that are chronic, yeast that is chronic, um, etc all of the protozoans that are chronic, worms that are chronic. And this is sort of the illusion of Western medicine that we are still like a hundred years ago where people died much younger, uh, primarily died from massive febrile inflammatory diseases and then using antibiotic was sort of a save-all solution. But we are in a generation where people live much longer and uh, have been peppered with antibiotics when we're young, and therefore, since from a Chinese medicine perspective, antibiotics are a yang qi, a yang ming substance, meaning that drains out the yang qi of the spleen, and therefore our immune yang. Uh, we are, as young people, very often already uh, vacuous, meaning we are open for infectious, uh, or maybe the acute infection is drained out, but that then makes room for chronic infections. Not just viruses like the Epstein-Barr virus, not just spirochetes like um, malaria and Lyme disease, but also to things that we thought, you know, can be just the drained by antibiotics like streptococci or staphylococci. And uh, even those I find in, in patients are often chronic in nature and often the cause of autoimmune disease because there is this chronic strep infection that was only suppressed by antibiotics and is now contributing to this goose lime uh, that is literally possessing a hollowed out tree trunk that the patient is manifesting and cooperating, collaborating with viruses and spirochetes and yeasts that then kind of um, kind of hollow out the host and, and, and run the system, including our emotional responses. It has been shown that certain parasites can thrive off the biochemicals that we secrete when we get angry. So sometimes it's 
you know, people feel possessed because all of a sudden they're, they, for no reason, they fly off the handle. Well, just like parasites can give us sugar cravings, they can give us um, certain cravings uh, to, to fly off the handle so that they feel better for a while. And so this can be an extremely destructive syndrome, while in ancient times this was primarily a situation where we can say um, uh, tropical jungle disease. 2,000 years ago in China, 3,000 years ago in China, people died from snake bites, they were ripped apart by tigers, and they died from, they were ravaged by febrile diseases like malaria and other uh, dengue fever, uh, Q fever, etc., those types of things. And, um, and uh, diseases like, uh, that was still an, a major issue all the way to the era of Mao Zedong, uh, was one of the first things he did after he came to power in 1949, to eradicate, have a massive effort to eradicate schistosomiasis from the rice fields. This is a serious disease that can kill you in, 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 uh, three months where you get a massive ascites in the belly because the liver is destroyed from little things that drill, that live in snails uh, in the rice fields and that drill into your foot when you walk in the rice fields barefoot, which most of the peasants used to do, and, um, and then go into your lymphatic stream, etc. And so goose syndrome was primarily that, tapeworms, malaria, uh, protozoan infections uh, and and the schistosomiasis, uh, so things that hide out in the background and make you. Uh, but in modern times, it is more things like chronic candidiasis, chronic Epstein-Barr, AIDS, uh, Lyme disease, those kinds of uh, things, and I find particularly that a lot of autoimmune diseases also have that because from my perspective, and I think we already did a special, or if we haven't done that, then we will on uh, in Pro, at ProD about the treatment of autoimmune disorders, which get more and more common. It is not that genetically the body decides to all of a sudden do crazy things, but autoimmune problems are always an overreaction to an underlying threat like chronic and invisible guerrilla warfare like infection in the body. Very often of the nasty kind like spirochetes and uh, severe viruses. For more information on this or other Prodi Live, distance or online courses, please visit www.prodiseminars.com.